uh, we are certainly going to start with an interesting interview for you guys. Uh, the author of a book called Losing Our Religion, The Liberal Media's Attack on Christianity, uh, S.E. Cup joins us. Welcome, S.E. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, no problem. We appreciate your time. Uh, now, there's a couple of twists and turns here. My understanding is that you're actually an atheist, Essie. Is that right? That's true. Okay. But you believe that the liberal media is attacking Christianity? I do. All yes. right. <laughs> okay. Rock and roll. So uh, let's get started. Who do you think is this liberal media uh, that is attacking Christianity? I mean, like if you're talking about me, yeah, I don't agree. I'm agnostic. I don't believe in Christianity or Islam. And and if they're fundamentalists, I do attack them. I mean, I catalog probably dozens, maybe even over a hundred different media outlets in the book, but primarily the New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, um, you know, both both opinion journalists and and reporters. It's a it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty wholesale attack on on Christian America. Yeah, actually, we have the New York Times uh, a little audio from them when we asked them, uh, "Hey, what do you think about Christianity?" They said to us, "I'm going to attack it." See, so you must be right. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, Essie, I don't, I, I'm missing it, so educate me. Um, how, how does New York Times attack Christianity? Oh, well, lots of ways, both in what they report, what they don't report, the way they report it. Um, just to give you one example, during the gay marriage debate out in California in 2008, in two months the New York Times wrote 13 stories on the protest by uh, gay rights supporters. Uh, for Prop 8. Mm -hmm. 13 stories in two months. And in that same period of time, not a single story on the violence and vandalism perpetrated against Mormons and Mormon temples at the same time. Not one single story. Um, you know, that's, that's, I think, a lapse, a lapse in judgment and irresponsible journalism. But, Essie, you know, as I see the media in an absolute frenzy over the Tea Party people and covering yep. their every step, uh, for example, they cover uh, the on the same weekend or in back to back weekends, they had a Tea Party protest and a gay rights protest that was much, much larger. And the gay rights protest got almost no coverage at all, and the Tea Party guys did. Now, look, you could put that as a conservative bias, and sometimes I'm inclined to go in that way. Or sometimes you say, hey, you know what, that's a little bit more of an interesting story because of the different angles that they're taking. Is, is that a possibility, or you think, no, the people at the New York Times got together and decided they're anti Christian? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think that's that's wishful thinking. I, at the same time, as the uh, the Prop 8 protests were going on, and and the New York Times wrote 13 stories, the first Tea Party protest happened, and uh, not a single story on the first wait, Tea Party that brought wait, out. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, so you're not saying that the Tea Party people didn't get enough press coverage. You're not saying that. You can't possibly be saying that. Well, in fact, I am. I mean, the, the media, the liberal media, ignored the Tea Parties for as long as they possibly could, hoping that they would go away. And there's coverage now because it benefits the liberal media to, to cover the Tea Parties in this angry, vitriolic, and, and completely unfair way. But at the time that the Tea Parties first emerged, Washington Post, CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times completely ignored the fact that millions of people came out on a single day, not over two months, but on a single day, to, uh, to, to protest high taxes and, and profligate spending and, and all of these things. I mean, not a single story. That's incredibly irresponsible. Well, uh, it, it would be if it was true.